Attorney Jeremy Hogan back. Man, I used to sit around and wait on the edge of my seat for this guy to break down the big events of the day. And he doesn't disappoint here either. He makes really complicated issues, simple for the everyday person like myself to understand. I'll link the video down below where he breaks down Ripple's latest response and all the key issues involved. Check it out. But there's one part of his assessment here that I want to discuss. At the end, and again, to be clear, he's just making a wild guess. His best judgment call. But he says, you know what, he doesn't think there's going to be any disgorgement here in this case. But he's predicting a $100 million fine. And again, it's just a round number. He's just kind of guessing here. But what would happen if the number was $100 million? Well, there could be a silver lining here, in my opinion. I personally don't think things are going to get better for the SEC in appeals. They might actually get worse. Uh, Jeremy Hogan thinks they are going to take this to appeals. But a number of $100 million, it might be enough for the SEC to take a victory, to say, hey, we brought Ripple into compliance. We got $100 million in fines and penalties. It might be where Gary Gensler and the SEC can save face here and just end all of this and walk away. Because, again, it's a damaging victory. It hurts everything they want to do to Coinbase and Binance and Kraken and every other crypto uh, token out there. Of course, we understand that. But is it going to get better going to appeals? That's the question. Is it going to help them to kick this up the ladder and get this decision confirmed? Because it likely will be. Again, Judge Torres ruled by the letter of the law here. Now, I know a lot of people don't think that Ripple should pay anything. That really it's the SEC that should be paying fines and penalties. But at the end of the day, whether fair or not, there were $700 million, more than $700 million in illegal securities offerings. They're going to have to pay something. Again, it ain't going to be $10 million. It ain't going to be $2 billion. I think $100 million kind of makes a lot of sense if you just sit on that for a little bit. Uh, Ripple can pay it without damaging their business in any way. Not a big deal. They will move on from it. Would that be a high enough number for Gary Gensler to go away? Well, only time will tell. But I wouldn't be surprised if Attorney Jeremy is pretty darn close with his prediction there. Um, there's this news going out that BlackRock just made this game-changing move with Hedera. And from what I've seen here, BlackRock did nothing of the sort. Now, Hedera is a great blockchain, high TPS, a lot of capability. Wouldn't be surprised if they or someone else does use it for this uh, you know, utility in the future. But from what I can see, this unrelated third party, Archax, tokenized a BlackRock ETF. And they're using that on the Hedera blockchain. So it has nothing to do with BlackRock. It'd be like if you tokenize a dollar on the XRP ledger and try to say, well, that means Ripple and the U.S. government are somehow in some sort of partnership. People are taking some kind of cool news, but trying to spin it in a way that's just untruthful and I think misleading. At least from the research that I have done here, that's what I'm seeing. It has nothing to do with BlackRock. A third party uh, tokenized one of BlackRock's ETFs and they're, you know, sending it and swapping it on chain, which is really cool. I think will be the future of much of the security, uh, the security system there. Now, Crypto Eddie's showing the following here. Uh, this is from the Ripple's uh, response here. And when they're talking about on-demand liquidity and the fact that for U.S. customers, they're not using XRP. They're actually using USDT, uh, Tether. And she says the following, no surprise here. Uh, Navin Gupta was the first Rippler I heard on YouTube interview who mentioned that other digital assets would increasingly serve as RippleNet bridges in the future. And as far as those channels claiming USDT is a scam, oh, the twists of life. Look, uh, is Tether perfect? No. Do they break up a lot of rules? I'm sure they do. But it's a massive stablecoin. It's the biggest stablecoin there is. It has tons of liquidity, and that's why Ripple's going to use it because it serves their purpose. They're also, uh, in this announcement, saying they may use Bitcoin and other vetted stable coins as well. And some people were freaking out about this. Look, they're going to use lots of different dis digital assets for different purposes. This is one example where XRP isn't the best for them to use right now in the U.S. market because of regulations, because of the possible compliance issues here. So they use other digital assets that, while they aren't as good as XRP for this purpose, they sure are better than traditional finance. And you're going to see this probably build out farther. You see Liquidity Hub and Ripple will lean into different digital assets for different reasons. Again, you might be going into a corridor that doesn't have a lot of XRP liquidity, but it has Tether liquidity. Or it has liquidity in Ripple Stablecoin or Bitcoin or Ethereum. And they're going to leverage 
the whole digital asset ecosystem, yes, a lot of their payments are going to be using XRP because it's fast, cheap, and meets that need. But it doesn't have to. And we don't want them exclusively using XRP. We want them using XRP for its intended purpose. And that's really the key here. That you know when they're using XRP, they're doing so because it's the best available option. BlackRock, Grayscale, have to wait for SEC, Ethereum, ETF decisions. Uh, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen here. I heard that uh, BlackRock was meeting with the SEC today, going over um, some issues with their application. It's impossible to call. I mean, those are some heavy hitters that are trying to push this across the finish line. They might get it done. We will find out. But uh, at this point in time, it just feels like the SEC is going to you know, kick this thing down the road. They are pretty nasty to crypto at large. We're hearing they're digging around you know, Ethereum a little bit. We don't know if something's going to happen there or not. But I wouldn't count it out just yet because, again, BlackRock, Fidelity, these are big players. They just may get their way. And that's going to open the gates for the rest of the altcoin market. We see Fidelity Bitcoin ETF draws $40 million in largest single investment from advisors. We were told this by Brian Kelly the other day that, yes, the ETF has been around, but advisors are just starting to ramp up and get their clients' funds uh, invested in this. We see Financial Advisor Legacy Wealth Management and United Capital each invested $20 million in shares of the Fidelity Wise uh, Origin Bitcoin Fund. That's Fidelity's Bitcoin ETF. So that $40 million, not a huge number, but it's a start, and you're going to see more of this. Again, that tool's there, and advisors are going to start using it, that's for sure. Lastly, Block has announced they are going to develop full Bitcoin mining rigs. Big news for Bitcoin, because I said the other day, the biggest risk for Bitcoin is the fact that all their miners are built pretty much in China and you need to decentralize that supply chain, the people that are supplying those miners. And this is, you know, one that are going to try to jump up in here and compete with them. We don't want just decentralization of the mining rigs globally, but also the suppliers of that equipment. Big, big issue. Jack Dorsey and Block trying to make a difference there. Let me know what you think down below. And as always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Link.